All right, good morning, everybody. I just started the recording. Um, I want to be mindful of everybody's time, so I don't want to wait too long to, to get going. Um, thank you for joining us for today's teaching and learning call. And um, as usual, we'll start off with um, some general announcements. So um, on the announcement side, if, if you haven't already marked your calendars for November 10th uh, for the Sakai Virtual Conference, please do. Um, we will have more details about the conference emerging very soon. We're updating the website and all that good stuff. Um, but I hope that the CFP will be available later this week. So the call for proposals will be opening up um, and we'll be sending out some messaging about that um, via email and also <clears throat> through social channels. So if you follow Sakai on uh, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, we'll be posting some reminders there about the call for proposals and also registration when that opens. Um, and uh, at the virtual conference, we hope to, um, to have some results back from the open, health, open source health factor study, which we're going to be conducting with the Sakai community between now and then. So hopefully we'll have some uh, information to report at that point. Um, does anybody else have any announcements that they'd like to share at this point? Okay, um, so what I had planned for today was a uh, preliminary gap analysis between the Sakai discussions tool or forums tool, as you may know it, and the new conversations tool that's been at development um, with Duke and is being piloted at Duke right now. Uh, so the, the conversations tool, if you've not seen it already, it is um, on master, I believe, and uh, there have been some test servers uh, prior to that where you could go and preview some of the work. Um, and there have been a few presentations about it. But, um, but basically, it, right now, the first phase has rolled out at Duke. And that um, first phase is, um, is kind of the question and answer style of um, conversations, which was um, intended to kind of replace some of the functionality that Piazza had provided. Um, because the institution wanted to move away from Piazza. Um, so that was kind of what went into the first phase. But ideally, um, the hope is that conversations will become a replacement for the discussion or forums tool in Sakai right now. And in order to do that, we need to um, address a lot more use cases around grading and threaded discussions and things of that nature. So that piece of it is going to go into the phase two development. And um, what I was hoping to start today, I know we won't finish, um, but at least start looking at the features that are currently in discussions, which of those are kind of must have features that people really feel like have to be there before they could transition, that sort of thing. Um, and then just kind of have a, a running list that compares the two so that um, people can make a, a decision as to when they're comfortable. Um, potentially transitioning from one tool to the next. So um, so all this is very preliminary and it's all still in motion. There's still stuff being planned to be added to conversations that's not in there yet. There's, um, there's stuff that uh, has been added to JIRA. There's some additional um, features that have been listed out um, with the Duke design team. So um, all of this is still kind of a moving target. But um, let me go ahead and share some um, a spreadsheet that I've linked it in the notes, but I'll go ahead and do a screen share as well so we can kind of all look at it. Um, all right, you should be seeing my screen now. And let me I'll just do a screen so we get a little more real estate. All right, so what I did was um, I started a Google sheet um, that kind of goes through the list of features. And so I started with like some of the documentation um, and this this uh, Google sheet should be open for anybody to edit. Um, I started with the, uh, the things in documentation that are documented for forums. So that's why you see a whole lot of green here 
um, because most of this is stuff that forums can do. If I came across something that I knew people were asking for but didn't currently exist and it made sense to like it, I remembered it because I was talking about topic locking here and I remembered that that was a feature that people wanted. I went ahead and put that in there. Um, but I don't know that this list is completely comprehensive. So what I would like your help with is to look down the list and see, is there anything missing? Um, and then down here toward the bottom, you'll see there's a whole bunch of no's there in the forums line. These are features that were incorporated into conversations, the first um, iteration of conversations. So these were some things that, that currently don't exist. Um, and so that's why you'll see kind of the colors flip flop to there. So I thought that once we kind of identify all the, the features, um, then we can start looking at priorities. So you can look, I've, I've got a must have, nice to have, not needed um, selection in the priority um, column. And then I've got a space for notes. So if people wanted to um, make notes about, you know, um, this is a must have because, or um, forums does this, but it doesn't do it very well, or, you know, whatever the comment might be. So there's always these kind of ancillary remarks that people like to add. So, um, so we can, we can fill in some notes about that um, as well. Now, I also want to um, just point out, we do have a couple of old JIRAs. Uh, one of them is actually a farm project JIRA um, from the Modernized Forums Working Group, where there was a lot of thought that went into um, improving, modernizing forums. And there were some um, JIRAs, a few of them about around the UI and around grading um, that were created intending to um, improve the current forums tool. But in all likelihood, um, we won't be improving the current, the current forums tool much more than it already is, unless there's like a bug or something broken. Because um, it, since we're looking at, at a brand new tool instead, all of the, the bulk of the development would probably be focused on the new tool and making it do what we want it to versus kind of retrofitting the old uh, forums tool. But this JIRA um, and the, this, the links to the, um, the sub JIRAs, particularly like the, maybe the gradings one talks a little bit about um, links within links. Uh, there we go. This one has a little bit more information about why it doesn't work well with grading. Um, so this might be informative for some of the things that we want to think about as the grading is being developed for conversations, because that piece is, is yet to be done. So anyway, so that's there for your reference. If you want to go back to any of those and look at them. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop back over to the actual spreadsheet here. All right, so um, does anybody have any comments at this point? I, I do want to uh, just point out that I made my best guess on the features for conversations. I think I got most of them, um, but if, if I made any errors, Michael, you know, you know uh, the features better than I do. If I um, selected the wrong thing on any of these, please uh, feel free to correct it. Um, I glanced through the, the documentation on conversations to make sure I got most of them, but if there's anything I left out, please add it. Um, so anyway, again, does anybody have any thoughts, comments, um, suggestions at this point? Nobody? You guys are so quiet. Well, I put, I put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you <laughs> dived right into features. I was thinking more big picture, but yeah, we can go ahead and dive in. Um, I, I, I don't like the forum's topic structure. I never have. I thought it has always been confusing to teachers, especially new ones, but mm -hmm. I don't know what's replacing it. Right. Um, it oh. is... Everything's kind of a uh, a topic, so there's like no forum level. Um, Can you group them by like if you've got four or five conversations you want to have in a unit or a week or something like that? Is there a way to group them? Uh, you can tag them, 
Okay. Um, so you could tag it by week one or week two, and then you could filter by tags to just okay. view those. But okay. you, there's not really a way to, um, like on the page, organize them in, in order, like week one, two, three. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Hey, listen, while everybody's thinking, just mm -hmm. kind of divert a little bit because we have an urgent current issue with forums the way that it is now. Mm -hmm. We have a student who's blind and totally dependent on her screen reader. She uses Mac and Safari, and she has not been able to tab into the area where she can read and respond to the conversation. I'm wondering, has anybody else seen this with any of their users? And if so, what kinds of solutions you've come up with? Chris Knapp has weighed in on this, and he's found that she probably can function using the arrow keys. But this is kind of current enough that we haven't even been able to get her to try it out yet. Has anybody had um, some experience with this? Chris, maybe you want to add something? No, I mean, Terry kind of summed up where we're at in exploring this issue. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was able to go out and do some testing, not using the specific combination of screen reader and browser the student's using. We haven't replicated the actual environment yet. But, um, and I asked Dave uh, Evelyn just for some clarification as to whether he tried using arrows when he was trying to test it. But um, I did have a conversation with Michael just prior to this, had him review some of my notes just to make sure there wasn't something else that I'm missing. But I'm thinking that's probably our best bet um, for, you know, looking at a short term solution is just, uh, you know, incorporating some other uh, keystrokes to access the different parts of the current discussions tool um the other things we've been thinking and these are i haven't even talked to terry or dave about this other than just proposed in an email is maybe there's an lti tool that would be better um even though that's maybe not the best thing to do mid semester is to do a big change like that um or we've also looked at mobile um i brought up a course site on my iphone and was able to do um, some of the main things that um, they outlined that the student was struggling with so we just have a couple of short term kind of workarounds that we've identified, but you know, nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I was on, I was using Chrome. I don't know if that's a question or a statement, Adrian, but yeah, the uh, strange thing about this is that she was able to function in the course she took previously. There was a code update on August 8th that Martin found, and we've been wondering if there was some kind of regression in the code that maybe affected the functionality. Yeah, so yeah. maybe maybe I'm that's a great sure. good question for Adrian. I see he's on here, so I don't know, Adrian, if the she, SAC, the SAC for this is uh, four six two three eight is the SAC that um, Dave Evelyn created for this. And Adrian, she was using Safari. Yeah, okay, we probably I, should I, take the troubleshooting for this offline, though. Um, and you guys can. Yeah, come we've back been to trying to do that for over a week, and uh, find some resolution for her to be able to function in her course. But okay, it, I was wondering mostly if anybody else has come across this or advised that if they do, this is what we're coming up on. Okay, great. Um. So does, just from the folks that are here, um, do you see any features that you know are in either of the platforms that are not in this list already? Um, you guys wanna, I don't want to read them all off, but you can kind of browse down the list and see. Um, if there are any, please add them, and uh, we'll kind of get to them as we go. Um, what I'm thinking is we'll just sort of start at the top and, and discuss as we go down. I know Terry had uh, talked already about the forum topic organization. And I know that is something that um, the Modernized Forums group actually suggested getting rid of that as well, that that's something that um, creates sort of an artificial 
requirement that a lot of people don't understand. Um, so I'm going to mark that one as a not needed because I don't think that requirement to have forums with topics in them is really something that people want. Um, let's see, reordering options. I noticed somebody marked that one as a must have. Um, do you want to speak to that a little bit, whoever marked that one? Jennifer, yeah, you want to explain a little more about why that's a must have for you guys? Carrie agrees. When you make copies or copy over and add and move around, this helps to be able to reorder them back. Just reading what she wrote in the chat, so the recording has it in there. Sometimes instructions have them with one at the bottom and they have to change them. Instructors, sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm reading as she's typing. <laughs> um, so what you're saying is that you know the instructors want the topics to appear in a specific order, and so they want them to kind of roll over from term to term. When they copy, they might add something, but then they want to resort them, reorder them, so that they're in that you know one, two, three order as designated, right? chronological or the current on top. Okay. Um, yeah, so Terry, would you like to speak? To, you said you agreed. Um, and Christina looks like she also agrees. If do either one of you guys want to chime in? But uh, you need to be able to organize these things. And a drag and drop would be ideal if it's if it's uh, usable for somebody who can't drag and drop. But um, uh, one thing that frustrates the heck out of me is when somebody stuffs everything into an unorganized folder. And this is what you can have if you've got 40 or 50 conversations and groups and all that kind of stuff. You have to have a mechanism to organize things so that you know where you can find something quickly. I get some notes there. I think the, th the thing I'm hearing from from this is uh, I'm going to use the word arbitrary because I don't know a better word, but we, the need for an arbitrary, manually defined sort versus create a date or alphabetical or author. It, because it seems like you could do a lot of this with tags, but you know that the order of things as they were displayed would be based on something like created data by author. So if the instructor says, well, no, I want this one to be the first one and that one the second, we need a way to, to manually define that. I'm going to chime in here, Michael. Our instructors always copy from like a master template. Um, so the topics are all would all have the same creation date, and they'd all be created by the instructor. So what would give any sort of semblance of order if we've got a 16 week class with, you know, three different topics, three different questions posed per week. I was just waiting to see if anybody else had some additional thoughts on there. So you want, um, what I'm hearing is people want a way to set a manual order um, that carries over when copied. That dive with what uh, most folks are saying? Yes? Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. I, I, I don't know if you've also talked about grouping them in addition to sorting them. For example, if you could have a group called week one or module one where multiple conversations could be held and it could be open or closed like with a down arrow, that would be another way to 
that grouping container would be very helpful the way forums are grouped right now. Okay, so a lot of people were saying that the forum grouping level wasn't needed, but now I'm hearing that maybe it is in some cases. Is that, but you'd like that option to group at a higher level, but not have it be a requirement? Is that yeah, I think I'm that's hearing? I think that's great. We're trying to meet, you know, a lot of different people's different needs, and there would certainly be cases that it would be super helpful like someone mentioned when you had multiple questions in one week um, but also not mandatory for every person to use are you envisioning something like lessons where the topics for discussion could be dragged and dropped and reordered but not necessarily contained within a hierarchical structure where you have you know creating a forum and then forums create topics because in the existing forums tool that throws some of our users because they don't see the purpose of having a forum if a forum with no topics does nothing right yeah and that's why people get confused about it so um for sure that empty group the, the, when a forum is empty and no one can see it, and that error message is so tiny that no one ever sees it. I mean, an empty group is not very useful, but in the, in the when you're creating, you need an empty group temporarily to put stuff in. But if people don't need groups, it's okay not to have them, but it would be good. I mean, in my view of the conversations tool, there were a lot of conversations, and so in a forums and topics, there's a lot fewer of them because the conversations are nested. So when the conversations become the primary method, there will be a lot more of them in a list and you'll need more methods of grouping and sorting than you did when the forums and, and topics were, were there. I mean, if, if you could imagine how many conversations yeah. ended up in one course, it's very different than the number of forums and topics that were there. Yeah, that's a great point, Bonnie. Um, <clears throat> so I changed that one from not needed to nice to have, and I made a note that we would want it to be optional. So it's something that people could add to organize, but not necessarily a required, must have an empty you know, forum to put a topic in before you can have a conversation kind of. Right. Um, so any other top or thoughts on like the the organization or the ordering of topics? Just to follow up, um, so the number of whatever, let's call it topics in our average class, it's let's say it's a 15 week class, 15 topics and maybe one or two, you know, a student support forum and a one-on-one -on -one with your faculty or something. So 16 or 17 items. But in each of those topics, there can be up to 20 conversations. And so now we're just talking about a methodology for managing 300 conversations instead of 17, maybe, topics. I just wanted to put those numbers out there as we're thinking about the kinds of things that might be needed for sorting and and that sort of thing. Right. Yeah, and that's actually a kind of a, a moderate use case. I've seen discussion forums with thousands of, of individual posts. Um, so they can get quite large, especially if you have a big class or you have a lot of group forums or, you know. Yeah, and both use cases are valid. If we're trying to make a tool that works for the widest number of users, it would, it, I, I appreciate that. I didn't want to be inflammatory and be throwing out huge numbers. I just was sort of thinking of our average um, yeah. and other users are definitely more than we are. Um, so yeah, having that range to think about um, is really useful in thinking about how we navigate the tool. If you only ever want to have, you know, like that, the eight, the eight link rule, <laughs> 
you know, on a website, you only want to have up to eight links to choose from max. How many groups and sorting opportunities do you have to have so that you get can get down to a smaller number that's more visually able to be sorted through, especially when it's large text labels and not just little icons because these conversation titles are gonna have, I don't know what, five to 15 words as the title of the conversation. And then if there are 20 of those in a group having to read each conversation title, makes a lot of reading just to sort through them. If you can't sort by user, group them together, sort by date, you know, all of those options that will help you find something in such a massive amount of text. Um, we do have some sorting options in the list. They're a little further down. Um, there was no like method to my listing of this. It was just sort of how it appeared in the help <laughs> or how I saw it in the interface is the order that they, they put in. I tried to group things together if they kind of seemed logical, but there is some filtering stuff further down that we can talk about. Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like all of those options that you've included are great. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to templates. So um, those of you familiar with uh, forum templates, you can uh, you can set up like some of the settings for the forum or topic, um, and then any any new topic takes on those particular um, settings. How often did people actually use those? I'm curious. And almost never. Gina says never. Jennifer says never. Carrie says she hasn't seen. Okay, so not a lot of use. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say we probably don't need template options. I would say we use them primarily to set a couple of things that aren't set the way we like them by default. For example, the uh, mark as read automatically. We use the templates in every single course that we automatically create for that reason, because the default settings don't work for us. So we've changed the settings and we apply the template to every single course. So if there is a way to kind of just set those defaults at the system level, then you wouldn't need templates, right? Um, or to save them for future use in any way. Yeah, because like we don't want them for every course, but we want them for all of our course sites. We want, you know, my, something like that would also help. All right, so I'm going to mark this one as not needed just because it sounds to me like most people aren't using them. Um, and uh, for the, the use case that, that Bonnie describes, there are probably some other strategies that could be used instead. Um, so what we want to do is not build features that aren't going to be used because that's more code, it's more testing, it's you know more of everything. Um, so the ideal thing would be not necessarily to replicate every single thing that happens in forums right now, but to kind of trim it down to the stuff that we really use and make that really good, you know? Um, so I'm marking this one as, as not needed. If anybody wants to push back on that, please feel free to, to put some additional comments here um, in the notes area. And again, anybody... Um, should be able to edit on this document. So feel free to add additional stuff if you like. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to groups. So I know people use groups quite a bit. Um, in forms right now, there is an option when you've already got your groups in your site, groups have to pre be pre-existing. Um, and you go through the form or topic uh, workflow to set up a new one. Um, you have an option at the bottom that says automatically create uh, topics for groups. And it'll, it'll make a brand new topic for each group with the settings that you specified. Um, and it sets the permissions and everything so that the, the students in that group are the only ones to see it. So it, it can um, simplify the group topic setup. Um, is that something that people would like to see? Um, 
in a, a conversations type tool. And now bear in mind, it, conversations might work a little differently in terms of who's setting it up. Um, so, you know, that's going to depend a little bit like the way the Q&A works now, students can make topics um, if they're asking a question. So this might have a little bit, it might be a little different depending on how you're using it in your class. I'm seeing a few people in the chat saying that they do use um, private group topics. They, they do it for, for larger courses. Terry's saying it's a must have. Um, and there is the functionality to create group um, topics in conversations right now, but you have to do it manually. What I'm talking about here is the automatic make one for every group option. So people are saying, in, in general, yes, they want that one as a must-have. Okay. All right. So duplicating forms or topics. Um, right now, you can duplicate a whole forum, and it'll copy all the topics in there. Or you can duplicate a topic, and it'll carry over the instructions. Um, is duplicating a topic something, because remember that right now in conversations, there's just the topic level. We don't have the forum level. Um, so is duplicating a topic um, something that you would like to have? And a lot of yeses. I noticed that somebody, I don't think it was me, had marked that one as a nice to have already. Um, does anybody want to talk about um, that a little bit and maybe the person who marked it as nice to have? I, I was think thinking it's, it's nice to have because it can simplify, like I wrote in the chat, the creation of similar items, but you can also do copy paste if you don't have it so you know there are ways to to do that um but i think <clears throat> automating it makes it a whole lot easier for the creator of of your items right yeah the copy paste is a, is a fairly easy workaround but it's a little more work yeah Does anybody else want to weigh in on the nice to have versus must have distinction? Or should we just leave it as nice to have? We've had issues where people copy the content of the view long description and accidentally grab hidden HTML code. Um, and when they paste it into their next topic, it breaks it. So the ability just to duplicate prevents that user error. Um, it just happened to us a number of times. Right. That's a good point. But depending on how conversations is set up, if it doesn't have that toggle HTML code in there, there might not be the code to grab. <laughs> Well, they're actually grabbing the code that's on the forums page in a blank line because they open that little view um, long description button and so then they copy it. Automatically tog the new one then automatically toggles closed as soon as the students open it. Oh, okay. So, so that would make it harder to copy. You'd have to actually go into a conversation, edit it, copy, cancel that one out, go create a new one and then paste. The efficiency yeah. aspect and the user error aspect I'm would make it. Wondering if you know, depending on how conversations are set up, the copy paste might not have the risk of that hidden code causing problems. 
that's possible. Yeah, I'm thinking they would need to go into like the edit view to get to it. If they're just viewing it, there's a there's a good chance they're gonna pick up some extra code somewhere. Ma'am. Yeah, it's just them trying to save a few steps in the duplication process when they didn't know about the duplicate button, which is super useful. And then as soon as we show them the duplicate button. All right, so I'm pulling that. up conversations so you guys can see. For those of you who aren't familiar with what we're talking about here, it's kind of hard to visualize sometimes. Um, so here's a conversation with just a few random things in here. So these are the topics here. Um, so if I wanted to say copy this, where it says test, that's my description. Um, so you have to first select the topic and then you can view the, the description over here, the question, whatever it might be. Um, my suspicion is that people will try to grab from here because they won't want to go in and, and say edit, go into the HTML editor and grab it from there. Um, so I would think that you would probably get people gra grabbing some extra code. They're just looking at it and copying what's on the page. Um, I don't think, yeah, there's no duplicate. Oh, somebody's near the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> the freeway in rural New Hampshire. I'll turn on oh. my crisp. If you guys haven't used crisp, it's a background noise. <laughs> <laughs> removal. All right. So um, anyway, so that's what it looks like in case uh, folks were wondering. So what do we say? Nice to have or must have? I vote must to reduce the user error that they're likely to do. But. A couple, uh, let's see, one must. If we get a few more or not. Okay. Looks like we've got a good number of folks that think that that's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. And again, this is not done very um, systematically, so we might go through a few iterations of this. Um, gap analysis, but for now, it seems like people feel pretty strongly about that one. So we'll leave it in there. Um, all right, so grading, obviously that's a big, um, that's a big thing um, that needs to be there. And it, it's kind of a big thing in a deceptively small <laughs> description here. I didn't go into a lot of detail because I figured that that's something we're going to need to unpack a lot more. Um, but we do recognize people grade discussions and they need to be gradable. They need to talk to the grade book, um, all that good stuff. So I, I know there's a lot more there. Um, but I think we would probably need to unpack that whole workflow a little bit more. Um, and that wasn't really my goal for today. Um, I just kind of wanted to get through as many of the features as possible. So um, if anybody has any other thoughts on grading, feel free to, to chime in now. Um, but I'm, I'm going to consider that one a must have um, because we've heard enough from different folks about it. To be a lot more intuitive grading than the current discussions slash forums tool because especially with the grading with rubrics you know ha having to pick the right grade book item from the drop down menu or the double dash means no rubric if you don't have a rubric linked or rubric if you have a rubric linked mm -hmm. it's it's it requires a book of documentation um for instructors and it's just a large amount of frustration right now in addition it would be great if the grading was built in the way it is in assignments so that students can see their grades right in forums um and faculty don't have to build all those individual rows for every topic or conversation in the grade book um before they can actually grade anything 
So I'm just making a few notes there. Some of these are observations that were in that um, JIRA that I mentioned at the beginning about making uh, forms grading better. Um, so yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of, of clunkiness involved right now with the way that the grading works. So ideally that will be a much more elegant solution in conversations. Um, but I've noted that rubrics are particularly bad <laughs> when you have to like set them up over here and then link them there. And yeah, it's, it's confusing. So, Any way yeah. it can mirror other tools mm -hmm. reduces the need for secondary training and people getting confused. Um, so as much as it could mirror, you know, assignments would be wonderful. It again reduces errors and confusion and the need for training. All right, so I've put in there it needs to be similar to assignments for consistency. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep on going down here to availability dates. Um, I know that is something that a lot of people use. Um, right now, uh, I would I would consider that probably a must have. I'm, Guessing. What what do you guys think? Are it dates are they nice or must have? It's funny, I feel like we're hitting my stride for the features that I want because I know availability dates are something that are used by a lot of instructors at my institution. So that would be a must have for you, Adam? Absolutely. I see Jennifer says dates are a must have. Um, Terry says the only way, other way to control release would be through lessons pages. Yeah, we don't want to make it to where you're, it's dependent on another tool um, necessarily. I'm going to say either the either the availability dates or the lock automatically by dates. One of those two is a must. And given a choice, I'd prefer the lock rather than the hide. Okay. I just put a note there about the preference for auto lock. Um, so I think enough people are saying that they want this that I'm going to mark it as a must have. Um, topic locking, I would also probably say is a must have, and it's already in both, so it's kind of academic at this point. It's it's in there. <laughs> um, it would now, be great if that. It would be great if that were marked as read only. It's unclear what the term topic locking means. Mm -hmm. um, to our users. So if that could say lock topic for read only or store any any little notation in there to indicate that it's so that it can be read only and not hidden. Um, those two things get confused. Um, so the um, the topic locking automatically is that a nice to have? I'm assuming that it is because it's something that we don't have right now and we're we're limping by. I mean, um, I, 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 I'll, <laughs> I'll speak up here. I know that locking by date has been requested frequently by people at my institution. And if development on the existing forums tool is going to be in a parking lot because we're looking to replace it, I think that actually raises the priority on this for the new discussion, or sorry, the new tool, because mm -hmm. there is pent up demand. Okay. Anybody else with some pent up demand? <laughs> Terry agrees. Very, very um, much more. Um, my faculty like having it locked so students can still read um, the posts, but want it so they can no longer post so there is no fudgeability about due dates. 
you know, with assignments, with tests and quizzes, there is a way of having an absolute due date. You must have it submitted by X date, X time. And if you're three seconds past the due date, that's the game over. Mm-hmm. With forums, it's fudgeable. Right. So they end up with a, in a fight with a student who submitted, a po- who posted three minutes after they said to have it done. Do they give that student credit for three minutes? Again, that mirroring thing really helps. If it works the same in both tools, that's ideal. So, um, and Christina, you were saying earlier that you would actually prefer automatic locking to having availability dates at all, right? I'd prefer the automatic locking over automatic hiding. What we have now is the automatic hiding. Mm -hmm. And I guess I don't see as much use of making, you know, all of the existing posts unreadable after the due date, but certainly making it so after a topic is closed, you can go back and read whatever you want, but there is no more posting. Yeah. Okay. So, and availability might be more of a visibility function. Yeah. I, again, I think it's just a, a possible naming. All right. So you guys have convinced me. I'm going to put that down as a must have, at least for now. Um, and again, if anybody wants to push back on any of these, they're all up for discussion. Um, they're not all going to be developed immediately anyway. So <laughs> there will be time um, to argue your case, whatever that might be. But again, feel free to add to this spreadsheet with additional notes or um, other information. Um, All right, so we have about 10, well, 12 minutes left. Do you guys want to continue um, going down this list or would you rather switch and and talk about a couple of JIRAs on our JIRApalooza list? Um, I'm willing to do whatever the group would prefer. I have a plus one on continuing the list from Josh. Anybody else? Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. No objections. Okay. We'll keep on going then. Um, so moderation is already in there. Um, so uh, I'm assuming that that is, you know, since it's in there, I'm going to mark it as must have because it was considered important enough to get into the first phase. Um, the post before reading option, um, is that something that is a must have for folks? That's where the student has to read or has to post before they can read other students. I'm I'm going to argue for must. Um, We have an instructor who actually uses the discussions as almost like assignments. They're not open-ended subjective questions it's more objective information but by requiring the students to post first and then read others they sort of gain more understanding from reading others answers but they can't for lack of a longer okay all right so this is a must have because we've got several musts uh agreeing with that in the chat um all right so What about moving a thread? Right now you have the option as the instructor to move a thread to a different topic if somebody posts it in the wrong place. Is that something that people use often? Bonnie's saying that one's a nice to have. I would agree with that myself, but I'd like to hear what other folks think. All right, Christine is plus one to nice. Terry says instructor control is usually better. Well, you know, yeah, but <laughs> that still doesn't say is it a nice to have or a must have. <laughs> so um, I'm going to mark that one as nice to have. You do have the ability to delete, just as an FYI. Right now there is, and I can't recall if I put it in this list. If I didn't, I probably should have. Um, but you do have the power to delete messages. So if somebody posts something inappropriate, that could be deleted by the instructor. All right, so that 
That one I'm marking as nice to have unless anybody has a strong argument to the contrary. Right. Um, save forums or topics as draft. Um, this is already in there. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming that's a, a must have. I see a couple people saying save as draft is must have. Um, there is, uh, and it's further down the list. Let me just scroll down. That's a, the, saving the topic as a draft. There's also um, right now, let's see, down here. But, yeah, there's a save messages draft, which currently you can't do in forums. Um, you can do that in conversations. So um, just since we're on the draft topic, um, what do you guys think? Is that a, um, oh, Dave, hi, glad you could join us. Yes, we are recording, so you'll be able to catch it later. Um, is that a must have for folks? I see people saying yay. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say yes. All right. Here we go. Let me move back up here because I skipped a bunch. Um, all right. So um, the overview and or dashboard currently has a message uh, forum widget on there that tells you how many forums, how many messages new you have. Um, so is that something that is a must have? It's more about promoting dashboard. If you want dashboard to be use, used, then mm -hmm. it has to have a feature like that, I think. Yeah. A lot of my in my opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> finding, uh, you know, and getting to forums quickly. So if there's an equivalent for the conversations, that makes it a lot easier for students to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, we want to surface as much of that activity in the dashboard possible. Um, all right, so right now uh, in forums, you can sign up to kind of watch a forum and get email notifications. I don't think that's available in conversations. And Adrian, Michael, maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we have that in conversations right now. Notifications, not yet. But it's coming. It's kind of on our lists, right? Yes, it's on the list. But part of the um, notifications rebuild that Adrian's working on is the plan. So would, would folks consider that a must have or is that a nice to have? It's coming either way, but just yeah. for priority purposes. Must for sure. We need we need our students to read more messages in the tool. I feel and like if they prefer to do it in email, then. I think it needs to be able to be set per topic or group, not just a universal harassment with internal emails or not. I agree. Um, whoops, I put that in the wrong cell. All right, so I'm going to say that's a must-have. Anyone else hearing? Yeah. Okay. Statistics, we already have some in there. I'm, I'm going to assume that's a must as well because, again, it floated to the top of the list for uh, for the first iteration. Um, so we do have some, some statistics in there about, like, the number of messages posted, read, that sort of thing. Um, once people get in there and start looking at conversations, I do encourage you to try it out and you know, play with it a little bit on nightly, or if you're, you've upgraded to a version um, that has it once it's widely available um, and you, you know, maybe piloted in a course or two, let us know if there's other statistics that you would like to see. Um, because we tried to get as much information as we could about what sorts of, of visualizations would be helpful. The folks both for faculty and students in the tool um, but if you've got thoughts along those lines uh, please let us know because that's an area that we are always trying to get more feedback about um all right so student view statistics currently i don't think students get to see their own stats in uh, forums 
they do have a view in conversations. Is that correct, Michael? I, I think they do. Yeah, I think they can. It might be a permission, maybe, but um, but I'm pretty sure that they have it. And how how important is it for folks? Um, to let students see their own stats. Is that a nice to have or is that a must have? She's saying nice to have. So I'm going to mark that as nice to have. I think it's a permission in, in conversations whether or not you want them to be able to see it. It's my recollection anyway. Um, and Mike is agreeing in the chat. So. He's not sure what the default is. Um, all right. Oh, thanks, Adrian. Yeah, he says it's on for instructors off for everyone else. Um, all right. So, uh, and I think Terry had a, a question that went by so fast uh, about general statistics, last day of attendance. No, we're just talking about statistics within the discussion or conversation tool not overall statistics. Um, that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> so we'll definitely need feedback there as well. That's on the roadmap. That's something we want to build out more, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about just within the tool at this point. Um, yeah, lots of worms, Dave, all worms. <laughs> Um, all right, so group awareness. Um, we do have group awareness in the new tool. I know that's something that's big for a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that one as a must. Um, now there is a, I think, little known feature because I didn't even remember it until I started looking through the help and saw it in there. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, you can have a direct link to an individual message. Does anybody use that? <laughs> Dave's saying, what? We can do that? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. Um, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, that we don't really need that um, since most people appear to not know that it existed. Um, so if, if you want to make an argument for that, um, feel free. Yeah, Jennifer, I'm not so sure. Go ahead. I'm not sure that's the logic to follow just because people don't know about it, that they don't need it. If they don't know about it, it means it wasn't obvious well, in the that's last true. version. That's true. <laughs> but how many occasions do you think you would have to put a link to a direct, a direct link to a message somewhere else? I think you can figure it out by right clicking the link and grabbing the URL and pasting it in manually if you needed to, but. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm not I'm not contesting that it's not needed. I'm just saying <laughs> I, I, I don't want to follow that logical end to just because um, these power yeah, users we don't, on we this don't meeting part, didn't we don't know about it. That as a, yeah, as a blanket policy, it's probably not the best. But in right. this particular case, I think it's probably OK to, to say that's a feature we don't we aren't going to miss if it's not added. Um, Okay, so obviously we need a way to compose messages. We do have the same rich text editor um, in conversations that you have now with a few um, minor changes, which actually may be uh, um, put throughout Sakai to kind of minimize the, um, the, the toolbar, at least um, by default, uh, so that it's not quite, so it doesn't take up quite so much of the editing space, but it's the same HTML editor, so. I'm going to say that's a must have. Um, we already talked about drafts. Uh, file attachments. I noticed um, right now there doesn't appear to be a way to attach a file. Is that correct, Adrian? No file attachments? Yeah, no file attachment. And people are saying that's a must, right? at least a couple yeah it's the um, only way for students to attach an image or something um that they can't put into 
the form post itself. Yeah. And we attach rubrics because the rubrics tool doesn't work perfectly yet. Yeah, I can see a lot of different scenarios where you'd want to attach a file. Even if we fixed it to where they could paste images into the editor, they still might want to attach a draft of something for their peer to re peer group to review, or they might want to attach a worksheet, you know, for the class to use. Um, I, I could see that one as a must have. Um, what about quoted text? I think a couple of people said they had to have that. At least one person said that. Anybody else want to weigh in on quoted text in the message? Now remember, and, and let me just um, preview it for you again. In close it out. Or close it out. Back up again. Um, oh, we're over time. I just looked at my watch. Um, so I won't show you that, but um, if you're curious to see what it looks like right now, please go to Nightly and you can preview conversations there. And I do apologize for keeping you guys over. Um, if you're headed over to the UX call, that's right after this one in room three. Um, and so thank you so much for participating today. This session was recorded and I'll have it up on YouTube at some point. Um, I'll send out a, no a note to let people know when it's available in case you came in at the middle and you want to you know, catch the first part. So um, this will be continued. We'll be doing more of this um, as this tool is built out. But uh, once again, thanks so much for participating and um, hopefully we'll see you at the next teaching and learning call um, next month. So. Take care, everybody.